Hello, my name is John Murray. I'm a member of BlackBerry Developer Relations Team based in the UK. I spend most of my time helping developers create applications for the BlackBerry 7 and BlackBerry 10 platforms. If you've followed any of my earlier blog posts and other content, you probably know that I tend to explore areas like near-field communication and Bluetooth low energy from a BlackBerry 10 developer's perspective, usually in conjunction with my colleague Martin Woolley. A few weeks ago I started working with something with Martin that has catapulted us both back into the world of enterprise mobile applications which is where I spent most of my time before joining BlackBerry about five years ago. I'm no stranger to enterprise architecture, Oracle, enterprise systems, or even SAP basis component, though I've been focusing on technologies like NFC and Bluetooth recently. We were asked to develop an application which employees of a company could request time off and managers could approve these requests. Martin has already covered the basic requirements and overall architecture we settled on in a previous video and blog post, but it doesn't hurt to review these here. If you haven't read Martin's articles or watched this video, I suggest you go and take a look at these. This video and associated blog post focuses on the native approach, but we'll also revisit the same requirements from an HTML5 perspective and then assess the degree to which we could meet the original requirements and how similar or different the architecture was. So, here are the basic requirements. Users must be able to submit vacation requests, must be able to modify the details of a, a, a vacation request, they must be able to cancel a vacation request. The user interface must be able to inform the user of their annual entitlement to holidays, vacations and the number of days used so far. Similarly, managers must be able to receive and either approve or reject vacation requests from the, the reports. It must be possible to use the application with no apparent impact to the user when there is no network coverage of any sort, that is offline usage. Integration with a particular enterprise backend system should require changes in only clearly designated parts of the application architecture. There were more uh, requirements of, of course, but these were the primary ones that we used to get us started. So what does the architecture look like? At a high level, the architecture has been described as follows. It has two primary parts, a graphical user interface application and a headless service. There is also something called an adapter framework, some queues, an internal API called the operations API, and messages flowing around which you term operations. You can also see that the BlackBerry Hub plays a role as well. If we peer away the details, we see there are really four major elements. The components in green, the GUI and background service, map nicely to the GUI and headless service components of a headless application. Whilst the components in orange, common functions and adapter, map nicely to be a pair of shared libraries. Let's have a look at how I've organized this in Momentix. So, I've chosen to name the complete application Annual Leave, uh, letting me name the na main components as shown here. Annual Leave, uh, the GUI uh, application, uh, part of a headless application. Annual Leave Service, which is the headless service of a headless application. Annual Leave Common, which is a shared library of common functions. And Annual Leave Adapter, which is a shared library uh, which will be used to, to interface to an enterprise backend system. I use Git as a source code control tool and as a vehicle to share the development work. And in fact, this is a significant point that is worth, uh, worth dwelling on. The four projects themselves live outside the Momentix workspace in a folder called Annual Leave. This directory has a Git repository associated with it. This allows me to manage all four projects as a single unit in Git, but it also has other consequences. All four of these projects have dependencies in one another. For example, the, the GUI project, Annual Leave, needs to have access to the header files that the Common Library project has exposed to allow its APIs to be used at build time, and to its shared library, once built, to allow external reference to be resolved at link time. This is much easier, much more transportable if all of these projects live outside the Momentix workspace and are just imported into Momentix without copying. 
trust me, I've been there and tried it uh, with various other ways, and it's just much easier this way without any side effects. Let's look at each of these projects and turn in a bit more detail. Let's deal with the two shared library projects first, since they are dependent of the GUI and service projects, and they're almost identical in terms of structure. The annual leave common and annual leave adapter projects are both shared library projects, so they have three important aspects. The header files of many of the classes need to be exposed to other projects since they embody the API exposed by the library. This is achieved by placing the header files in a folder called public in the project in contrast to the implementation of the APIs in the source folder. The shared library itself that is built is called libannualleavecommon.so. The common project is identical in layout as its shared library under the name of libannualleaveadapter.so. There's a slight wrinkle with both of these shared library projects. I needed both of these projects to understand QT constructs and in fact for their classes to inherit from QObject in many cases. The wrinkle is that the current version of Momentix only contains a shared library template that allows you to create a shared library project that uses the built-in toolchain rather than using QMake. That is, a library that you can create using this template does not understand Qt, so it's un unable to run the mock preprocessor against the project's header files. To create a shared library that understands Qt and inherits from QObject, you need to be a bit inventive. And here's how you can do it. I can't take the credit for this. Check out the great project on GitHub here at the URL shown. The instructions are very, very clear and it works very nicely. It does exactly what it says on the can. Let's look at the annual leave and annual leave services project. These two projects just represent the GUI and headless service components of a headless application. In principle, they are quite simple to create since there is already a headless application template in the Momentix tools. I did find one wrinkle with this process where the destination of a pair of projects was outside the Momentix workspace. I found it more convenient and less error prone to create the project in the Momentix workspace, export the two projects to a new location, delete the original projects from the workspace and re-import them without copying from the new location. So, now we've established four projects supporting the application. The next thing is to ensure that they know about one another and that the application is packaged correctly into a bar file with all the assets in the correct locations for the installation on the BlackBerry 10 device. Let's take a look at the annual leave project first. The one that's the GUI part of the application. This project really needs to know how to access the APIs in the annual leave common project. This would include things like the operations API that Man Martin has already described. There are two aspects of this. The header files needed at compile time in public, in annual leave common, and the shared library itself needed at link time, lib annual leave common dot so. The compile time and link time dependencies are expressed in the annual leave dot pro file. This file is used by QMake to construct the make files and orchestrate the overall build process. Here are the additions that are made to the profile for the annual leave project. I've added the public path in the annual leave common project to the include pa uh, path for the build of the project. This is the same whether you're building a debug build or a release build. We have to be a little bit more careful when adding the information used to locate the shared libraries at link time. You can see that I've had to deal with each of the possible target cases, debug, release, profile and simulator, separately. Each of these build permutations builds the library itself at a different location. The annual leave service project is handled in exactly the same way except that in addition it needs to be aware of the details of the location of both the annual leave common and annual leave adapter projects and its profile needs to be updated properly. Similarly, the annual leave adapter needs to be aware of the annual leave common and annual leave service projects. You may find it useful to identify the references these projects have with respect to one another. It helps make building and cleaning projects a bit simpler in that Momentix knows what projects need to be rebuilt if another project changes. 
Right. Now that all the projects build consistently individually, the next task is to ensure that all the necessary assets are collected together into the single bar file when the application is packaged. So let's look at how we package the complete application with all four components. The specification of the packaging of the application is the responsibility of the bar descriptor XML file. Since there is only a single bar file to be created for this application, even though it consists of four constituent projects, only a single bar descriptor file is needed, and this lives in the GUI project. Here's a section of that file. It happens to be the section that describes how the assets are assembled for a debug build, but the principle works for other build types as well. There are two points to draw your attention to. Each asset stanza identifies where to find a particular asset and where to place it in the target bar file. In this case, the lib annual leave common shared object is found in the directory uh, shown on the screen. Uh, and placed into the bar file, it will be found under the directory lib slash under the name lib annual leave common dot so dot one. Did you notice the dot one at the end of the shared library name? This is a technique for associating version numbers to shared libraries. I discovered that when the BlackBerry 10 operating system tries to locate the shared library for libanualeaf common, it was actually searching for libanualeaf common dot so dot one. So I had to add it to the bar file under this name. So we know how all the assets will be packaged into the bar file. But how do we let BlackBerry 10 know where to find these files at runtime on the device? Further down the uh, bar descriptor file, the highlighted directive makes sure that the application is launched with the environment variable LD library path set to include the path ap slash native slash lib, which is where the shared libraries end up on the BlackBerry device as a result of the instructions we've used in the rest of the bar file. So this means that at runtime, the application can locate the shared uh, libraries that we've created in this location on the device. There's another topic I want to talk about. You may wonder why I wanted to have the annual leave adapter implemented as a shared library that understood about Qt and have its contained classes inherit from QObject. In essence, I wanted the ability to be able to interact with the objects defined in this library through Qt signals and slots. I wanted to be able to communicate with the adapter through ordinary methods and have events returned from the adapter as Qt signals. I wanted to define the interface to the adapter in terms of C++ methods and Qt signals. So how should we define and implement an interface to achieve this? If we were working only in C++, then we'd define an abstract class, and the developer who was implementing the adapter library would create an implementation class that implements this abstract parent class. This works nicely for methods that call into the implementation. However, it takes a bit of Qt magic to get it working for signals. Here's how I did it in a stripped down version. The class iAdapter is a standard abstract class with added Qt magic. It has a pure virtual function, annual entitlement, rec, which will request, say, a leave entitlement for a specific year and a Qt signal, annual entitlement, resp, response, representing the response to this, also defined as a pure virtual function. The key to getting this to work in with, with Qt is the declaration QDeclare interface. This identifies the class iAdapter as being a Qt interface in addition to just being an abstract class and allows the mock compiler to get behind the scenes of the class and weave all the Qt metadata together. The implementation of a class iAdapter impl that implements this interface looks something like this. This class is dependent on both QObject to give uh, the signal and slots functionality and iAdapter uh, since I'm adapt implementing its interface. QDecl export just ensures that this class is internally from the shared library. The Qt magic here is the declaration QInterfaces iAdapter. This is what tells Qt that we're implementing an interface declared previously by QDeclare interface and allows the mock compiler to weave its Qt goodness into the implementation.
Here you can see how I might actually use this interface. In the first instance, I can use this to call a method in the adapter, and in the second, I connect a signal in the adapter implementation with a slot in my application. Notice the uh, subtle part where you have to cast the pointer to the implementation instance to a queue object pointer to have it as the correct type for the queue object connect call. Implementing the adapter in this way supports extensibility and in that it makes it easy to substitute other adapters that support other enterprise interfaces whilst maintaining a well-defined interface to the rest of the application. So, what observations would I make on the overall architecture that we've established here? It's certainly reusable. This pattern is encountered in many, many places, in many contexts, and in many, uh, many applications, many application workflows. It's flexible in that it can accommodate tailoring to specific needs. Uh, you can customize it. And it's also robust in that it provides a well-defined separation of different functions and capabilities. Similarly, what observations will I make on the overall project structure? What benefits does it have? Again, it's flexible because it maps to many common use cases. Similarly, it's extensible because we can accommodate many back-end systems through the use of different adapters. And again, it's a robust framework because the well-defined interfaces and separations of concerns. So, this brings us to the end of this video on one option for the native flexible project structure for enterprise mobile applications. I hope that you found this to be useful. We suspect that because of its generality, this project structure will be useful in many other enterprise mobile application contexts. We pull together uh, all the details of various articles, blog posts, code samples and videos uh, can be found on the URLs on the screen. Um, why don't you go there and, and, and take a look? In addition, if you'd like to approach myself or Martin to talk about the subject of this video or ask for help, please feel free to do so. Our Twitter handles are there on the screen. Thank you very much for your time and for listening.